and uh, welcome everyone and very nice to see um, some familiar faces and also some new faces and uh, well of course thank you for inviting us to give this workshop and um, well I mean what we would really like to do is kind of share our vision what we do at our center um, the smart city innovation lab and um, how we and we give like kind of like an example of one initiative that we have eventually, which is like a business model tour, and kind of like <clears throat> discuss with you how we integrate this and how we see kind of like our outreach and um, yeah outreach initiatives, like see, and um, yeah, please feel free to uh, interrupt at any time before we start, and I will share my screen in a second. Maybe just so much that um, so Claudia is with me today. Um, maybe Claudia, you want to introduce yourself first? Okay, so uh, I'm Claudia. I'm working with Rene at the Smart City Innovation Lab since uh, 2017. Uh, I'm a researcher. Uh, I'm also a PhD student on digital transformation and business models. Um, and I also have been helping Rene on teaching business model innovation, where we, uh, from the last few editions, we have been using this uh, amazing platform that we want to show you today. So any question you might have, any help from our side, just let us know. Cool. So thank you, Claudia. And it's great that you're here today. And um, so basically in terms of structure, we thought that we would give you kind of like just briefly an overview of what we do and how like eventually fits in into the, like the whole spectrum. And then we will also give you like a, a demo of the platform, how we use this and, and what you can, how we have been using it and others. And um, and then we go like slowly into a Q and A if, if if that works for everyone. Yeah. All right. Nice. So so maybe like one thing, just as background, the Smart City Innovation Lab um, was founded by myself in 2016, just like after I um, moved from Amsterdam at the Amsterdam Business School where I did my PhD, then to Katholika Lisbon as an assistant professor and um, started uh, my, my journey there. And we just had at the time like three European grants, uh, Horizon 2020 grants. And that was like a great moment to start a lab. And, and so we just called it the Smart City Innovation Lab because it seemed to be kind of like the most common denominator of uh, the projects that we were working on. And since then we have done like a lot of, uh, a lot of initiatives, work with many different companies, um, based always on our values of excellence, impact, respect, and especially also innovation. You see, this is our team. And in fact, actually it varies, no? And, 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 uh, and at times we were also like a bit bigger and at times also a bit smaller. And so it is like a very nice flow of people coming in. And I always see that like somewhat like for anyone coming in as like an, an apprenticeship, and then they move on, go to the world and um, continue to become um, postdocs or professors somewhere or go back to industry. And so I think it has been really, really nice and was uh, wonderful people. And I think like one of the core things that I, I would like to share with you um, next to Venturely is kind of our version um, of how we see the scope of what we do and how we fit in into society. And, and so basically once, we, once I received these two grants in 2015, 2016, I was like, oh my God, now what to do and how does it all make sense together? You know, Because as a professor, you need to do research, you need to teach, you need to um, do outreach initiatives. You have like a responsibility to work together with companies. And I wanted to make sense like of, of this as a structure. And um, after, after some brainstorming, it took me a couple of weeks and putting everything like always like on nice maps. And it's like, I see it basically like this. And this is how I explain it to, um, to my dean also. <laughs> it's like, look, we do like funded R&D projects and where we observe phenomena. For instance, we do like a big project on smart grids in, in Europe. Um, we do like on these phenomena, we conduct research and, and like based on that research, we, um, we develop frameworks and we um, publish papers. Also like one which just came out recently in the Journal of International Business Studies in a, 
um, special issue where uni also actually published. So I think that's that's really nice. And um, based on that, we like these frameworks, we use them also for teaching. And these teaching elements that we do, we also put on an online platform eventually, which we're going to see. Um, basically the best practices and this which we also like we open eventually also to the world it's it's a free platform to use um, and, and this is like how we see outreach and basically we see that like kind of as benefits going up and feedback coming back from the market then basically uh, coming down and so it kind of feeds itself okay. so integrity this is one of the larger projects that we did where we develop business models with a platform that we're going to look at um, in 11 different contexts and over the several countries in in europe and it was uh, has been super helpful um, for all the participants of that project to to think about and uh, to think about their business models and we also did for instance one project on smart city sentiment analysis and um, this is interesting because we use the platform also to gather data and we like step by step also want to integrate artificial intelligence which we show you in a, in a second into that platform and go back and forward where we can use the platform for teaching purposes but also for research purposes right um, i have to admit that so far based on the platform research um, has not been as um, successful as I would have hoped for. I will share <laughs> something uh, later on. Um, but basically, the the idea of Venturely, and initially it was called Smart Business Model, was something that started when I did uh, my postdoc at uh, in St. Gallen. And then I was working together with uh, Moritz Loke, and we were both saying, like, look, okay, we really like the business model campus both of us did research on business models and uh, but there should be like a good way of doing that online and of course there is also like an online platform um, from alexander osterwalder but we thought like well there were also limitations to it and we said like well maybe we can do this better you no know? and um, we've been working on that and at some point um, we we split passes and i continued developing this instead of a smart business model we named it to venturely and develop like a really nice methodology for the um, for business models and for for startups also won the um, um the reimagine education award from wharton and us in 2019 and basically it's like a blending learning platform and um, the idea was to make business modeling accessible for anyone really in in the world not only like privileged people at, uh, that can attend business schools, but also anyone in developing countries or in remote areas or people that uh, already passed university education, you know? And, and so this is like, we want to take you by the hand uh, from the idea, and you see here our process, right? So like from the idea to the customer, to the business model, to the strategy towards implementation. And so it's, it's kind of like a stepwise approach which, where you tick the boxes, and um, so our argument here is that anyone can be an entrepreneur, of course, within limits, but that, that was kind of our, that was our starting point. And um, now just here are a couple of like milestones. So the idea was born in 2014. We developed a business model a database. We also presented it at the web summit and won an award. And um, but more importantly is probably the tool. And um, let me show you just real quick here what the idea is. So basically we give on the platform bite-sized units for um, business modeling. Then we have like kind of like the swim lanes as we call it, like playbooks for uh, each individual step so that you can do that yourself. There's also a feedback loop if you want to, if you want to have a coach. And, and then there's like several tools that you can use and specific, uh, I think like the tools that are fairly interesting and we let's have a look at them in, in a second um, is of course the business model canvas and we made the canvas smart, right? And with a couple of tools that we feel add a lot of value to um, becoming entrepreneurs, right? 
also including, for instance, a, a pitch deck creator. At the same time, um, also mentors can use this, and this is what we do in our teaching. So uh, I, using this, I can present, um, I can see like who, who am I coaching at the moment, and if it's in a class, I see like the different teams. I can keep track of like where, where they are, and I can give feedback on individual steps. There's templates that can be used free of chat or also like uploaded and there's kind of like a stepwise approach. I've been using this now in bachelor, master and MBA programs and everyone um, was actually like, we, like super happy with that. You see that here. So you have like student projects, you the progress, same story, you know, and you have a repository. So I think now this is also a good moment to move then to a demo. All right, and um, maybe Claudia, if you like, you can you can um, walk us through this. Okay, uh, can you just stop your uh, screen oh. sharing? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, cool. So basically, as Renee already said, we have been using this platform also for teaching, but also for um, creating uh, new ideas uh, with the startup incubators, etc. So I will show you two different views of the platform. We will start with the view of a normal student or a normal entrepreneur that wants to develop their idea. And then I will also show you the view of a professor, okay? So. This out. Okay, so. Let's start with the student's view. So if you don't have any account, you just need to sign up where you can choose your email account, your name, and uh, your uh, to choose a, a password. If I already have an account, which I already prepared a couple of things to show you. Okay. So Basically, this is the, the, the first screen that we'll see when you log in into, into Ventrally. And as you can see, if we click here, we have three different types of projects that we can create. If you, for example, uh, have already uh, your idea developed, but you just want to uh, test your business model or develop your business model, you can create this kind of projects. You just need to give a name. Uh, in the case uh, that you already have everything done, but you are um, prepared to present your idea in front of an investor, you can click here and uh, develop a pitch deck generation. You have 10 slide uh, a pitch deck with all the relevant information that you need to present to a, a, an investor. And then if you want to create your project from scratch, from idea until to implementation, you have uh, this option called venture creation. I already create some to not lose a lot of time. So let's start, for example, with the business model project. Okay. So basically, this is the the the, the known uh, smart uh, the the business model canvas. Uh, then the normal square with these nine elements, where you need to evaluate what are your key partners, what are your key activities, what are your key resources, and so on. And one of the, uh, the main advantages compared to uh, the already existing uh, uh, tools to build your uh, business model is those options. For example, you can also combine your business model with your cash flow. If you click here, for example, you can add some values in order to calculate your cash flow. If you want to test uh, your value proposition, you can do some assumptions in order to test it in the market, and you can do it here. You just need to write the, na the assumption name. You can uh, add some description of your assumption and then test it. Also, uh, on the ecosystem uh, uh, radar, uh, you can um, see which kind of companies uh, are in the same ecosystem than your uh, idea. And we have uh, uh, in the, the platform a database of around seven, uh, 70,000 companies where you can uh, compare it uh, with, your, with your idea. Also, if you have some questions or doubts about how to develop your business model or how to put it in, into, into the paper, I, I would say, we also have this option, which is an auto business model, which can give you some suggestions that are based on the description of your idea. Also, 
This comparison is also made uh, with the, our database of 70,000 uh, 70, um, companies. Regarding the business models, and this is something that when I was already working uh, uh, for quite long, which is develop business model patterns. Business model patterns are um, best music practice uh, already been used uh, in companies. So for example, I'm pretty sure that you might be familiar with this kind of revenue models, paper use, for example. And I sought to do a small example with you. So I presume that everyone knows Uber, okay? So let's imagine that you want to uh, do or develop the business model for Uber. You know that uh, one of the key partners uh, of uh, the company are the drivers. You know, for example, that the value proposition is taxi on demand, and you can click here and write taxi on demand. You create your post-it, you have one, and you can drag it to here. So you already have your value proposition. Also, if you want to describe a little bit, why do you consider that uh, taxi on demand is a nice description for, for your value proposition? You can add some information here, okay? Any question? I'm going too fast or it's, it's pretty okay for you? Michelle has a question, I think. It's great, I have a question. Um, okay. This, this sounds really amazing a lot for uh, uses of the center I work at and a lot of our engagement and various other things. But I'm curious, the, the 70,000 models that you have in here as based, are they all for-profit traditional business models? Are you dealing in any social innovation? Um, is there any kind of outside the box stuff? Is there cooperative models or is it very much a for-profit orientation? So um, Michelle, like more, mostly to be honest, they are all like for-profit. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and that is because uh, the auto business modeling is mm, it's based on on the business model generator which has like these 50 uh, patterns right and these patterns are all like uh, more or less like for profit and and so we train the algorithm for that but to be honest i mean most of those also would work in a non-profit environment yeah, totally. and it's it's also mostly uh, for inspiration and 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 kind of like a, it's a bit more of a gimmick in a sense rather than something that you should uh, take kind of like to the next level and say like oh, and pitch it to investors now no, but, totally. there is, yeah, but there is that there is uh, business models also if you go to the bottom claudia i mean we also have a business model database and there's like two which might be interesting which is like the circular economy pack and the sustainability pack and those are based on papers by uh, Nancy Boke and colleagues and also by Florian Ludwig Freud and colleagues. And so we integrated that here and they go more like into that, di in, into that direction, like really. Cool, thank you. You're welcome. So let's, for example, add another element to our business model canvas development, which is a key activity. So let's put it here. Okay, so as you can see, you can come to the essential pack or the digital transformation pack if you are dealing with a project or an idea re uh, related to digital transformation or even to circular economy or sustainability, and you can drag any uh, kind of these patterns to your business model. In, this, in our case, in our example, let's go to the essential pack, to the revenue models, and everyone knows that Uber works with paper use. So, let's drag our um, pattern to our business model. Of course, that the business model should be a little bit more complete. So you need to have some information about the customer relationships, what are the customer segments, what are the channels that you are going to be used to retain your customers, what are the key resources that you need to put into, uh, into the market, your value proposition, and what are the cost structure. So after uh, filling in all the canvas, you can then do your cash flow uh, calculator in order to be if, to see if your uh, project is um, valuable or not. Okay, so this is one of the options when you have an idea. Uh, it's already defined. It's already concrete, but you need to develop your business model. Other project that you might assess, assess is um, 
the, um, and I call it Shark Tank because it's quite obvious. It's when you need to prepare a presentation for an investor. Imagine that um, your idea is going to be quite successful, but you need to some investments to put it into, into the market. So we prepared here uh, this, this project where you need to fill in with all the relevant information that needs to be uh, in a pitch when you need to uh, get some investment from anyone interested in your idea. So you have a cover. You also have here an um, option with, uh, where uh, it helps you with the uh, information that you need to fill in. So in case of the cover, what you should have here, what is the core uh, that what you are doing. Hooper, for example, is providing better ways to move, work, and, and succeed. Then you also need to describe what are the problems that you are trying to solving, what are the solutions that you want to provide to the customers, the product, the market size, the pricing strategy, the go-to-market strategy, what are your main competitors, and how can you position it yourself comparing to them, what is your team, what are your competitive advantages compared to in the market, okay? So basically, I mean, this is meant, so this is based on the Sequoia, the classic Sequoia pitch deck. And it's not so much meant that in the end that you would again use this, uh, like if you indeed presenting to an investor, but in a class context, this is like very helpful because like for every single stage, you, you get explanation on what should be filled in and you already have like a predefined structure you know? and you can also download it as a pdf yes and then here. basically have them afterwards and you can also present right from here and it's nice mm -hmm. to, to give feedback on it now mm -hmm. at least you have an option to see which kind of information are quite relevant to show okay. and last uh the last one is the most complete one because is when you want to uh, start uh, your project from scratch. So you have an idea, but you are not sure if your idea is concrete, if it's uh, well defined. So here you have, uh, well, let me just uh, show you the steps. So you have the idea step, the customer, the business model, the strategy, the implementation, and finally the pitch deck. If we go in, uh, in detail, when you are developing your idea, at least you need to try to understand uh, what are the gaps that you are filling in in the market, uh, what you can do a mood board to uh, show your core of your idea. You also have here some uh, info, which is on our knowledge hub, okay? So for each uh, step, you have some supporting information and supporting uh, material that can help you if you have any question or any doubt on how to develop in the, redefine your, your idea. A press release, a value flow map, stakeholder intentions. Then if we move to the customer, you have also some tasks to do. Interview guide, market segmentation metrics, uh, market size metrics, a persona, which is one of the, maybe the most important things to do when you are trying to implement a service or a new product into the market, a customer journey map, a value ratio, uh, in order to evaluate the pain and gains of the adoption of this new solution. Then the business model. Um, if we click here, we go straight to the previous uh, screen. Uh, I mean, the smart business model canvas. Then the strategy. How are you going to enter in the market? How do you position it yourself in the, in the competition? Uh, you can do also the hypothesis testing and then the implementation. Cash flow your business plan, how do you try to, uh, well, how do you want to implement your, your idea into the market and then the pitch deck, which is that we already saw. So the Knowledge Hub has, uh, as you can, uh, as you saw in the previous, it's here where you have specific content for each of the steps that you need to, to go through in the development of your idea. So your idea, you have also some content about the customer, how to interview potential customers, what is the main relevance uh, of selecting your right pitch head head market, how to um, calculate your size, the size of your market. You need to also to know your end user, map the customer's experience. You also have some content for the business model development, also how to define your strategy on how to go to the market and also uh, the step of implementation uh, of your idea. So this is pretty much what you will see as a student, an entrepreneur, 
or uh, someone that wants to develop an idea by using this platform. So um, any question? Or do you want to go back again to any part of the platform just to get more into it? Or it's pretty clear. Maybe Claudia, then we can have a look at the back side of it, and then you see like how how a professor would see it, and or like a okay. coach. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's move to the professor view. Okay. So this is how you will see it as a professor or as a, a mentor. So imagine that you want to do a workshop or a small uh, course on business model innovation or even in on strategy or corporate innovation, you can use this platform. For example, if you go to programs, I already select one just to show you, you should have here an option of creating program. Rene, I'm not sure why this uh, option is not appearing here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so for example, imagine that you are going to do or to provide the course on corporate innovation program. So you can here uh, give a name to your program, a small description, then you save, okay? Then you choose the topics. Let's imagine that for this course, we want to provide to the attendees or to the students three main topics, ideation, implementation, and pitching. So you can add new topics as much as you want, and for example, let's see the topic of ideation. So here you have the, the naming, you have the description, and then you also have the subtopics. What can you add into the subtopics? Different uh, contents and different tasks. For example, let's see that, uh, let's imagine that we want the students to work on their idea. They need to select their best idea and they need to describe it. For example, here you have several options. You can upload the template that you have prepared for your students. You can uh, um, provide them a tool, an online tool, as for example, eventually uh, the Smart Business Model Canvas. You can also uh, provide them uh, a link uh, with some content or you can uh, add your text here. If we go here, for example, you we can download a template, which already, uh, is in the platform where you can evaluate your idea. So for example, the students need to uh, create, to come up with three ideas and then select the best one, where they need to evaluate the idea in terms of newness, usefulness or feasibility, and then they score the idea. The idea that has the, the highest score, it will be the idea that they will be working on, okay? For example, let's see, um, one option where we can go directly to a platform, to the, an online tool. Again, you can have here the description and then the subtopics, which is the most detailed content of each uh, topic. Okay, business modeling. So we have already developed the idea. We defined our customer, the market segmentation, the market size. So everything is done. And now we need to develop our business model. So. I cannot go directly to the, to the tool because I'm not on the user view, but as a student, if we provide this, they will see here a link that will go directly to the business model canvas to the same platform that we were, we were seeing previously. So here you can have uh, all the content for a course. You can also um, score the, the tasks performed by the students. You can also see uh, which kind of, um, of tasks were already uh, done, for example. So if I go here, I can see, this is the student perspective from the, from the platform. So you can check if the student already complete this task, the mood board, the press release, the value flow map, the stakeholder intentions. If we go to the business model and I click here, uh, we go to directly to the, the, the smart business model canvas where for example, you can review uh, this, the, the business model uh, developed by the student. Uh, it's uh, refreshing because there is already a business model done here, just for you to see. Okay, so this is a complete business model and here you can review it and also um, see what were the developments made by the students. 
One of the other advantages is that you can have several programs as you want, and then you can create groups, groups of students, for example. Uh, imagine that on the first semester you have a course on international strategy, and on the second semester you have a course on sustainable business models. You can create the groups for each course, and you can also have the content for each course as well. Um, and I think it's pretty much the most relevant uh, things from the platform, right, Rene? Absolutely. Um, I think that I believe this is also good enough, like to get a first impression and in detail. Yeah. Of course, there's like mm -hmm. more, there's more um, elements that that should be valuable than if you want to use it. But I think it's clear what it does and and um, how we use it. And so at the moment, I mean, of course, we use it for our own teaching. And um, if you stop sharing, Claudia, then um, I. Um, um, just, just to give you like some some impressions. This is like from from our MBA course, uh, the Lisbon MBA, and also from MSc course. Like some some feedback from students how how they like this. But not only is it used there, and because it's free, it's actually used all over the world. And sometimes we don't even know by know by whom, no. And. Um, we also have like several incubators or accelerators that, that use the platform and also several professors. Um, I know like in the UK and also in the US that uses. Sometimes I get emails, which is quite funny um, from especially, yeah, from, from New York. And then when something is not working and I mean, of course we provide that as a free tool and then I get angry emails and like, Oh, this template, there's something wrong. <laughs> Could you please fix that? Um, I, I have a class this evening and, and the students need to use it. So. And um, so we have not been commercializing this. And maybe that's also a, maybe also not super intelligent from a business model perspective, because sometimes, you know, like when things are free, um, they might not be considered as valuable um but those that those that do and you know i mean we we saw it like very much as impact oriented and students always like continue to use this and um we always want to pick it up again every year but then they come like other projects um in between and um yeah i think this is it for the, mo for the moment ah one thing that and i think that's Initially, our idea was that we could use this for research because if we see like who is who is registering as a student and also teams, then we can see who develops what idea and how fast are they and what happens to them in the future. No? So this is like that was the whole idea in terms of research, but we we didn't do it so far. No, so we are not uh, we are not tracking that as much. We we really very much developed as a teaching tool. And so far, not as research. We use it for research in terms of um, AI. So we developed an algorithm that can detect business models and that can read the newspaper. And, and, and that's the only way how we can suggest some business models for, um, uh, for the users. Um, but also there, like, I mean, there haven't been that many publications yet on um, let's say using AI for research, at least not in our field, I think. And um, um, before we have like very good results, we, we still have to improve our algorithm. Yeah. So I think that's, that's, that's what we do. And, and this is like how we try to, to do outreach, you know, developing this inside, keeping that um, part as part of research. It was also part of a European project and then afterwards um, make it available to everyone. Any question? Hi, this is Patricia speaking. Congratulations on the platform. This is very interesting. So I'll be uh, very much interested in applying uh, these tools in my sustainability strategy classes or sustainability management. And I wanted to hear uh, if you had any, uh, what type of feedback comments you had from instruct instructors uh, teaching sustainability strategy or, or students in sustainability strategy classes uh, using your, your tools? Uh, what kind of adaptations or where should we focus more on? Um, any advice on, on how to do it effectively? Thank you. 
Thank you, Patricia. Um, so we've been doing this now uh, pre-COVID also like for two years already. <laughs> and uh, and then over time, we we were one of the first courses that offered also classes blended. You know? And now, I mean, now it's very normal, but before that it wasn't. And uh, one thing that we notice is that students need to have like very, very accurate guidance, almost um, too much guidance where they would know, okay, this is online, this is physical, it, this comes, um, this unit comes first, and then afterwards we meet in class. So it's kind of like uh, being taken by the hand so that you have like at no time confusion on the side of the students and like, okay, no, what do I, what do I have to do? No? And that happens fast because you basically have two spaces, the virtual space and the physical space. And um, so one thing that we do, so we always start virtual, so a welcome session, and then we go into the physical class where we discuss the topics that were done um, virtually, and we do a quiz, and, and, and then we have like the next online unit again, then afterwards we do a, a quiz in the physical class again. And that works equally with it's now um, asynchronous and then synchronous on Zoom or in the classroom. Mm. And I would say that the results from the students are quite uh, better compared to a normal uh, class format because they can split the time uh, where they, they, they learn the, the theoretical frameworks and the theoretical content and then they go to the class is already prepared and the class is much more, um, as I can, uh, how can I say it, much more um, positive in terms of discussion between the students and the professor because they go already prepared with some cases already studied or prepared for the class, some tasks already done. Uh, they ask much more for feedback about the development of the project. So I think that they are much more engaged in the class uh, with, this, uh, with this system compared to the normal one. And I mean, for the professor, Patricia, at least for me, at some point I got like so bored, especially when you have like several classes and you have to say like, explain each concept again, over and over again. It's like, well, this is something that they can easily do asynchronous. I record a video and you have text, and then in class, you do like the value added part, no? where you just discuss cases, where um, you, you um, explain, you do games or um, have exercises, kind of switch classrooms, those kind of things. You know? And where you actually apply the frameworks that you learn uh, online, because sometimes the students complain a little bit that the class are too theoretical, and there are a few time to discussions and to more practical uh, tasks and by doing this you have at least one hour and a half of your course or totally dedicated for a uh, practical uh, uh, orientation tasks. so they are being quite happy with this uh, with this uh, system one thing that i like about it of course you can always make more use but so for each step you can have like a submission no and so like as soon as you have a submission then you can give individual feedback. So it makes it much easier to have like all submissions in one place. Before that, I always got like emails or like a Dropbox folder and that made it kind of like messy. And now it's all like in one place, it's submitted. You see when it is submitted, give feedback and you have like a small conversation on this with the student and then uh, it's done. And you can also grade it. You can give like a star rating and yeah. um, you go to next, which kind of gamifies the whole experience as well. On, on that note, uh, is the instructor able to see the ongoing development of, for example, each of the business plans as it goes? And can the students yes. collaborate in one project? Yes, exactly. So they are on teams. And Claudia, I, I can share once like our own class, if you like. OK. Um, let me just log in here. So um, for you to have an idea, um, as this is recorded, no, then it's probably not a good idea to because there's like actual names. names no? Yeah. <laughs> ah, um, let me see. I'm just checking if there's any names that I cannot. <laughs> that it's okay, it but you clarified. So, as instructor from your dashboard, you can see your students 
and their progress. And you can also group yes. the students in teams so yeah. they can all work together in one project. Exactly, yes. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And you usually apply this throughout the semester. How long does it take for a student to complete a, um, a six, business model? Six weeks. Canvas? Six oh, weeks. I see. Mm -hmm. I also did it already in two weeks, but yeah. <laughs> students didn't like it. It's quite yeah. hard. Yeah. 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 But yeah, um, uh, on the bachelor degree and also on the master degree, we teach the business model innovation course for three months. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah. 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 So I mean, it's it, that's up to you, right? You can just stretch it uh, yeah. and use it as much as you want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. And, cool. and also regarding your question, Marina, uh, the professor can see uh, the progress of the team and also the students can see if the professor already uh, um, evaluated or not the tasks. So they can see if you gave them stars or if you send them any message regarding any specific task from the, from the project. I can I can share my screen here, for instance, because I, I think there's no personal data. Mm. Where are we? Yeah. So this is that's the back end. And let me just scroll down a bit. Yeah. So you see then um, you see here, these are like the different projects. And then you can see per project uh, what's the progress. These are like the different elements that are part of each session. And then you see rating review, what is the rating? And then you would here basically see what, what has been uploaded and whether there has been any comments or, and you could add them a, a rating if, if you would want to, right? That's, that's kind of the, the idea behind it, yes. Let me just... I hope there was like nothing that couldn't be shown. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I mean, we like overall we had like very good experience with that. On on all sides, I think it's a win win win, right? So it's it's really nice um, for for students because I, I I think it fits especially Gen Z like anywhere. I mean, everyone has like different learning types right some like to learn at night and uh, all at once and some just like to read it on on the subway and, and and then they can just like do that on the go basically and and get the content and in class have value added and engaging content rather than you know like a one way uh, lecture about um about concepts, right? So not teaching about entrepreneurship, but how to be an entrepreneur, basically, that's what you do with this now. And um, so as a professor, I think it's so, so much nicer that you don't have to teach concepts over and over again, but actually work together with the students. And, and I think that's like so much richer. Uh, and of course, it kind of, uh, at the same time for, the, for universities, it, it makes it also a bit more innovative. Students like this. And uh, you would have more time to do, like to give content and to give feedback to students rather than on lecturing. Right. Uh, Renee, Marina has another question here on the chat regarding learning materials that are available to familiarize professors and students on how to use the platform or do we provide trainings? So learning materials, if you um, create an account on, uh, on Venturely right now, you will have access to the Knowledge Hub. So you have some learning materials of all the steps to create an idea from scratch until implementation. Um, and you can also give to, uh, access to the students to any paper that you want. So for example, if you, um, as you can see on the options, when you create different units and different uh, subtopics, you can also uh, connect the link, for example, with the paper about business model patterns in that topic so they can use access. And also it's also possible to add in the description of the topic, uh, uh, a link, for example, for a Dropbox folder or a Google Drive folder where students can click and download the PDF, for example. But Marina, that's also an excellent question. So like in terms of learning material, 
Um, this is one of the things that we want to develop now in the next month for, for universities so that they can use that more easily and, and being able to apply this in, in, in the classroom. Yeah, perfect. Um, because the, the tool is great. And I'm just wondering, I mean, it looks very much straightforward also with this like whole drag and drop functions. But I was just wondering, because that sometimes uh, saves a lot of uh, energy when I proposed it, for example, to our professors to use it, then they, of course, want to know, oh, how do I use it? How long does it take? Mm -hmm. And so on and so forth. So um, I think they would be very much thrilled uh, to, to know about this opportunity. And I have to say it's uh, great that you offer this for free. I know that other people would have taken the business opportunity uh, to say the least. So it's really, really great that you offer this. And um, yeah, it looks it looks great. And I also like how you combined like different things and functionalities also with the pitch deck and um, yeah, maybe also the business plan and so on. So we have um, these kind of uh, startup centers at universities and these are all the questions the students would have and the tools mm -hmm. they would need to do it. So I will definitely recommend that to our faculty. Um, so this is great. So thanks for, for sharing this. Most well, welcome. Thank you very much. Um, um, I mean, like as a business opportunity, um, there might be, so it's not, so, so some universities pay for it because um, they want to have it branded, right? So you can have it branded and, and, and then you have like more resources with it and then, then they also pay for it. But we haven't just like, not spend as much time on it because we feel like also these kind of resources uh, that you mentioned they should be there to to kind of like have a bit more scale right um so and and we might even consider that more so because we have the feeling that again as i said at the beginning if you don't charge anything people feel it's not worth <laughs> enough and you still want to ask for 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 feedback and for support and so things and that's why it, it might well change in the future just for those reasons you know and we we always do um especially do also for if we say like oh there's for instance like from a developing country demand there's like all kind of options to do it like also as a, at a minimal price probably you know and mm -hmm. uh, or, or just free if, if you want yeah. to yeah mm -hmm. When you offer this in the classroom, um, so you mentioned it also, I really like that you detect also the, the papers that the business models um, or canvas is kind of informed by. But um, I was wondering, because some students might not know the difference between the regular business model and the sustainable business model canvas and ideas behind that, because you have like so many options. And I just uh, was very familiar because I know the papers um, that kind of service the foundation. But I was wondering how you approach this. Do you teach students or do you kind of sensitize students towards the differences between this or how do you approach it in general? Um, that, I think that that's a very good question. So, I mean, to, yes, I mean, when I teach it, I, I would um, definitely say like, well, there's one canvas, a business model canvas that everyone yeah. knows, but there's like right. so many more, like the flourishing business model, the, we have also like a, a, a flourishing business model canvas, the lean canvas, and there's like, depending on what you need it for, um, you can do use different ones. One of the things that we work on is to provide actually a tool to create your own canvas. So depending on uh, who you are or what is important to you, you just create like your own canvas and then they can use that. So um, I think that makes, that would make it a bit easier than uh, to accommodate these things. Mm -hmm. Great, perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you, Marina. Uh, Joni, you have a question? Yes, uh, thank you so much for the presentation, Rene and Co. You just doubled the value of the conference for me. This is amazing. I will use this for master master students, definitely in a longer course. But then what I was thinking, and maybe you, you also already answered but I, I missed that so so uh, for for example a professional uh, or executive teaching you might have just afternoon or very short period of time and you want to do ju just a small part of this for example business model canvas some sort of mm -hmm. exercise there so uh, can you easily take just that sort of small modules here and there and it works fine absolutely you just yeah. um because you can design the course yourself on the back end where you say like, well, um, this is just like one afternoon and I just need the pitch deck generator or I just need the business model canvas. And then it's just that everyone can log in and um, that's it. 
Yeah. Okay. So you, you can do this. Yeah. Okay. Another question that uh, we we are using Moodle or some some hard, like a modified Moodle version. Uh, is there need to use that in parallel and have some sort of uh, integration with the tool, or can you use this uh, tool alone and all the gradings and everything in the end are well done within the tool? What's your experience? So there's there's no connection between Moodle and the tool. Mm -hmm. um, there was always something that we discussed, and there was that would of course somehow be valuable. We just didn't do it. Um, so no, there's there's no. Yeah. We we wanted to focus on the value adding part and not so much on the um, administrative part. Yeah, but mm -hmm. it's something that is certainly worthwhile to look at. Yeah. Uh, when you have done this uh, in, in your university, have you used uh, the tool with Moodle or have you been able to kind of like a cut the Moodle out from the process? Mm -hmm. um, so basically what we do, um, just to show you this once, um, we say like, we tell students the, the URL and there is, give me a second. Um, so if I go here, just opening it for you okay here so if i share my screen can you see so here um oh i shouldn't <laughs> no we have all the group members okay but on the left side you see the group token and um, the link to it now and we always share the uh registration link and the group token okay so you open that link then you enter that token and you immediately part of uh, of that project um, and then then you create teams there and so that immediately connects you and it's it's something that's easy to do for students i mean of course they need to create an account right so they need to put in like their email address and, and names um, but so far we had like good experience with that and uni maybe one thing when for example for executive education or like any kind of we generally get as a question like oh can we continue to use this after the course you know and i think um this, this is nice because you can just like add additional material and you just like um, give it to them afterwards and and have them continue using it no? mm. so it can be used after yeah yeah mm. oh, okay good thank you sounds great excellent um well, wait, let me just, if there aren't any more, any more questions, then I would say. I know Patricia had a question in the chat. Oh, she did. Oh, I made that uh, yes, it's about uh, access as, in, as an instructor. I actually registered uh, for the platform, but I think ah. I have the student view. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, we would have to um, create that for you and give you an there's uh, there's like a different um, page where you register as a instructor. As a professor, yeah. Claudia, uh, if, if you send me an email and Claudia, then we can um, give you access to them. Right. Thank you. Okay. Good. Uh, I I feel like if if everyone has or if no, no one has any more questions, then it was really nice meeting you. And please feel free. To reach out or to connect on on linkedin and um, very happy to to share more material and um, also to give you access and for you to use it and also like maybe that conversation on like mm, what could be what if you want to use it like what would you miss and what would you like to improve so we will have now um, a master student also starting on that creating like all the content and exactly packages for universities so that it's easier to use and so maybe that's that might be valuable for you then too.